We are back with the sixth video in our subnetting series, and in this one we're going to talk about something called the subnet mask. Now you've probably seen a subnet mask before, but you may not have known what it was and what it did. So let's take that on. You see, the idea is that with an IP address, there are parts. Part of an IP address tells us what network we're on, and another part of the IP address tells us what uh, the actual address of the the uh, uh, machine is we call that the host by the way so every um, every device that's on the internet uh, is is called a host because it's not necessarily a computer right it could be a, a server or a printer or some other device so we just call it a host to give it a generic name sometimes we call them nodes but um, we'll call them hosts here and so the idea is that we have part of uh, part of an address is a network and part of an address is a host. Uh, and I can liken this to the telephone system again. If I go back to the uh, the same uh, metaphor, I guess uh, if I that I used in, I guess it would be more like a simile, not a metaphor, wouldn't it? Uh, if that I used in in uh, number five. So let's take a look at a telephone number and see what we're talking about. In a phone number, we have a country code to tell us what country we're in, and then we have an area code. This tells me, for example, in this particular one that I'm in Washington State. 834 tells me that I'm in the Camas area, so the city of Camas. And then finally, the last four digits here tell me the actual uh, telephone number uh, that, uh, that I'm on in this, uh, in this region. Now, of course, after 9,999 numbers, we've run out of numbers, so the, they'll add another group, say 833, for example, to the city code here, and then they have another 9,000 that they can do, and they can just keep adding on to these things as they need. And if they still have too many, uh, then they can uh, uh, assign another area code and so forth. Uh, so that's it's a very similar idea except in the case of IP addresses we only have two. Let me show you what it looks like. Uh, we can say, for example, that the first half of this is the network that, are, that I'm on. I'm on network ID here 201.14 and the host ID is 39.55. Now uh, we have to be very careful here. Do not call this a network address because uh, later on in, in a later video we'll see that um, we have to that we have something called a network address and we in order for something to be a an IP address it has to have all four parts and don't call this a host address it has to have all four parts so we would call this a network ID 201.14 and host ID 39. 55. Now the funny thing though about the uh, network about IP version 4 is we don't always have to put the separator in the middle. We can put the separator off to one side. So in this example we have 201 being the network ID and 14.39.55 being the host ID. Or we could put it over here like this and call 201.14.39 the network ID and 55 the host ID. So what does that look like? Well this is what a subnet mask looks like. We just uh, take the part that we want to be the network ID and we make a mask that is 255's everywhere where the network ID is and zeros everywhere where the host ID is. So anytime that you configure a machine to have a certain IP address uh, in the, the form in which you, or wherever it is that you put in that uh, IP address, you will also be asked for a subnet mask. And you'll have to put in something like 255.255.0.0 in order to tell the machine well, which part is the network and which part is the host. Now, if we moved this bar again, for example here, uh, we would just use 255 to say this is the network ID and 14.39.55 is the host ID. Or over here, for example, 255, 255, 255, we have a network ID of 201.14.39 and a host ID of 55. 
So that's the way this works. Now remember that 255 equals 11111111. It's all, it's a full byte of ones. And a zero, of course, equals 0000000. So what we really have is a bunch of contiguous ones that looks like this, and then contiguous zeros. And this is an important concept. A subnet mask must always have contiguous ones followed by contiguous zeros. It would be illegal for me to have a one out here somewhere in the middle of, of these zeros. Uh, that would not be a valid subnet mask, and if you tried to uh, put that into a, a subnet mask in a form, uh, say on a, on a router or on a computer, uh, try to put a 1 in this place, uh, you would get an error message of some sort. It's usually some pop-up, unless you're doing it by command line. Uh, but you would get an error message and it would not accept that mask because the mask must be all contiguous 1s followed by all contiguous zeros. Now, where the 1s stop and the zeros start depend on whether you have 255.0.0.0 or 255.255.0.0 or 255.255.255.0. But either way, it's always contiguous ones and contiguous zeros. Well, that's it for how the subnet mask works. And so next up, we're going to look at something we call IP address classes. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video uh, for that one. Thanks for watching.